Hi guys, today we're going to solve another material balance problem for our topic, chemical engineering calculation. So this problem is coming from the book, Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes by Felder, problem 5.17. So this is the diagram of our problem. And then we will be calculating um, the solution for this problem. And as you can see, this involves assumption of our given as behaving like an ideal gas. So this is a really interesting um, sample problem uh, and I hope this will help you in your study for material balance. So, hindi na tayo magde-delay pa. Let us now jump to our solution. Alright, so let us read our problem. So this is from problem 5.17 from the Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes by Richard Felder. Okay, so let me read our problem first. Spray drying is a process in which a liquid containing dissolved or suspended solids is injected into a chamber through a spray nozzle or centrifugal disc atomizer. The resulting mist is contacted with hot air, which evaporates most of all the liquid, leaving the dried solids to fall to conveyor belt at the bottom of the chamber. Now, powdered milk is produced in a spray dryer 6 meters in diameter by 6 meters high. Air enters at 167 degrees Celsius and negative 40 centimeter water. The milk fed to the atomizer contains 70% water by mass, all of which evaporates. The outlet gas contains 12 mole percent water and leaves the chamber at 83 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere absolute at a rate of 311 cubic meter per minute. So we need to calculate the production rate of dried milk and the volumetric flow rate of the inlet air. We also need to estimate the upward velocity of air in meter per second at the bottom of the dryer. And letter B, what problem would you guess would occur if the velocity is too high? Okay, so ito yung question that we are going to answer now. So we have here our diagram of our process. So as we learned from our question, this is the production of powdered milk. So let us understand further our system by writing uh, whatever is given dito sa ating problem, okay? So we know that this is a powdered milk production. And we have a spray dryer in which we have the dimension of our dryer given here. So we know that our dryer is um, 6 meter in diameter. And it is 6 meter high. Okay, so alam natin yan based from our question. Now, air enters at 167 degrees Celsius and negative 40 centimeter water. So we already have that here. Okay, it is mentioned here that air is entering at 167 degrees Celsius and negative 40 centimeter water. Now, the milk fed so the atomizer contains 70% water by mass. So what do we mean by that? It means that we have here 70% water and the remaining 30% is the solid. Okay? So as you can see, ito lang naman yung pumapasok sa ating system. Milk and air. These are the only two components entering our system. So therefore, our milk here having 70% water is understood to have the 30% solid of the milk that we are going to have in our product here. Now, it is mentioned that all of the water, okay, all of this water that is contained here in our feed evaporates. So that means it will all went on this um, wet air here. Okay, and this is our final product. Okay, so lahat ng water natin nag-evaporate and it went here dito sa wet air. 
the outlet gas contains 12 mole percent of water. Okay, so here we have 12 percent mole of water. Okay, so we have to take note that this one here, as you can see sa ating given, the milk fed to the atomizer contains 70 percent by mass. So this is by mass. Okay, we need to properly identify because itong percentage natin dito is given in percent mole. And it leaves the chamber at 83 degrees Celsius, 1 atmosphere pressure, absolute, and a rate of 311 cubic meter per minute. Okay? So, we have here 12% mole of water, therefore the remaining 88% is the dry gas or dry air I mean okay dahil yan lang naman yung lalabas sa ating wet air the water which is coming from our milk and the dry air coming from our inlet air here okay then of course this is our desired dried milk all right in order to answer this we need first to assume that we have an ideal gas behavior okay and what will be our basis our basis for this calculation is this one because it is already given how much wet air do we have exiting in here okay the Volumetric flow rate is already given as 311 cubic meter per minute. Okay, so in order to have a better understanding in our calculation, we will name our outlets here. So, okay, so let us say this stream is N1, this stream is N2, this stream is N3, and this stream is N4. Okay in order to have a uh, proper naming of our streams okay so our basis will be the volumetric flow rate in our stream 3 is equal to 311 cubic meters per minute okay so sulat muna natin what are our required yung mga kailangan nating makuha una we need to get um, the production rate of dried milk. So, kailangan natin makuha yung production rate of dried milk. And then, we also need to get um, the volumetric flow rate of the inlet air. And then, we also need to get the upward velocity of air. Okay, so, we need to get the upward velocity of air. Alright, so let us have our solution down here. Okay, so, First thing that we have to take note is given na yung volumetric flow rate dito sa ating stream 3. Which we know that the wet air is flowing at 311 cubic meter per minute. So therefore, given na yung ating V3, the volumetric flow rate in stream 3 which is 311 cubic meters per minute. Then we know... The temperature on our third stream, which is 83 degrees Celsius. And we know the pressure in our third stream, which is 1 atmosphere. This is absolute, okay? Okay, although we know our volumetric flow rate, we still could not use that dito sa ating percentage because this is given as per mole percentage. So, what we should know is the number of moles of our wet air in order to apply this percentage okay so therefore we need to get the number of moles ng ating wet air and since we are given with this information therefore 
Assuming that it is behaving like an ideal gas, so we can apply our ideal gas equation. Okay, so we will be using PV and RT in order to get the number of moles in our stream 3. Okay, so we have pressure at stream 3, volume at stream 3, temperature at stream 3. Okay, so therefore our N is equal to pressure at stream 3, volume at stream 3, our gas constant and our temperature at stream 3. So what's our pressure in stream 3? Okay, we know that we have one atmosphere here, one atmosphere. Our volume in our um, stream 3, 311 cubic meters per minute. So we have 311 cubic meters per minute over our gas constant R. So we have 0 0.08205 cubic meter atmosphere per kilomole per Kelvin. Okay, then over the temperature in stream 3 which is 83 degrees Celsius. So we have 83 plus 273.15 to make it Kelvin. Okay, so let us check our um, Units first, so atmosphere will be cancelled out, cubic meter will be cancelled out, then Kelvin will be cancelled out, so our unit will be kilomole per minute. Okay, so what will be the value of our entry? So let us use our calculator to solve. Okay, so we have 1 times 311, so we have 311 divided by 0 0.08205, then divided by 83 plus 273.15. Okay, so we have 10.64 um, kilomole per minute. Okay? So now we know our stream 3, which is 10.64 um, kilomole per minute. Alright, so let us see ano ba yung pwede nating masolve dito. We already know um, the number of moles of our entry. If we know the number of moles of our entry, therefore, we can get the number of moles of water and the number of moles of dry air in entry, right? So our number of moles of water in stream 3 is equal to we have 12% uh, of our entry um, kilomole per minute so therefore our water here is equal to one point twenty eight okay so we have one point twenty eight kilomole per minute and the number of moles of air dry air in stream 3 is equal to 0 0.88 times 10.64 kilomole per minute so therefore this is equal to um, let's say 0.88 times 10.64 64. So we have 9.36 kilomole per minute. Okay, so we already have a value for the number of moles of water and dry air here in our stream 3. Alright, so if you're going to analyze our figure here, we can see that there is no water component dito sa ating inlet air and it is mentioned sa ating question that all of the water evaporates okay so it's written here all of which evaporates so lahat ng water natin from stream 1 evaporated and went to stream 3 so therefore 
the amount of water in our stream 3 is equal to the amount of water in our N1. Therefore, we can determine the number of moles of our stream 1 by doing material balance. Okay, so let us have a water balance. Okay, so let's have water balance. Then as you can see, water is only coming from stream 1 and stream 3. Wala nang iba pang panggagalingan nila. Okay? So, 70% of our stream 1 is equal to the amount of water in our stream 3. Okay? Which is this one. 1.28 kilomole per minute. Okay? However, kung matatandaan natin, our 70% here is mass percent. Therefore, we need to convert uh, what we have here into mass, okay? So, we have 1.28 kilomole per minute multiplied to the molecular weight of water, which is 1 kilomole for every 18 kilogram of water, okay? So, our kilomole will be cancelled out. Okay, so our N1 will be equal to 1.28 times 18 divided by 0 0.7 and this will be in kilogram per minute, right? So, let us use again our calculator. We have 1.28 times 18 divided by 0.7. So, therefore, we have 32.91 kilogram per minute. Okay, so we already know what's the value of our stream 1 in terms of mass. Alright, so based from that, we can also get the amount of solid, okay, in our stream 1. So, we know that our solid in stream 1 is equal to the 30% of our N1 which is equal to 0 0.3 times 32.91 yeah, so therefore our solid in N1 is equal to um, 32.91 times 0.3 so we have 9.87 kilogram per minute okay now the amount of solid that is in here in our n1 will be equal to the amount of solid here in our dried milk because there is no solid particle here in our wet air and this and we only have two exit stream here so therefore our solid in stream one is equal to our n4 which is the production of dry milk. Okay, so therefore our N4 is equal to 9.87 kilogram per minute. Okay, so we already got the production rate of our dried milk. Okay, so we already answered this one. Okay, so our answer here is 9.87 kilogram per minute. Next, we need to get the volumetric flow rate of the inlet air. Okay, so if you remember, we already have the value of our dry air. And we got that here. This is the value of our dry air, 9.36 kilomole per minute. Therefore, all of this dry air that we got here is of course coming from the inlet air N2. So therefore, we can have our air balance. Okay, so let us do an air balance. So our N2 is equal to the 88%. Okay, so we have here 88% of dry air in, in our wet air. So we have 88% of N3, right? So we have 
0 0.88 times n3. Okay, so therefore, our n2 is equal to 0 0.88 times n3. What's the value of our n3? We already got that here, 10.64. And we already calculate this, calculated this actually because this will be the same as here. 0 0.88 times 10.64, 9.36 um, kilomole per minute. Right, so what we need to define according here sa ating question is the volumetric flow rate of the inlet air. But what we have here is the mole flow rate of our inlet air okay but since we already know the number of moles and we have an air which is a gas in our inlet air so assuming this is ideal gas we can again use pv and rt in order to get the volumetric flow rate so volume is equal to um, volume in stream 2 right so will be equal to number of moles in stream 2, R, temperature in stream 2, and the pressure in stream 2. Okay? So, let us try to provide yung mga variables natin dito. We know N2, okay, the number of moles in our stream 2, nakuha na natin yan dito, which is 9.36 kilomole per minute times our gas constant, 0 0.082 cubic meter atmosphere per kilomole per Kelvin times the temperature in our stream 2. So what's the temperature in our stream 2? This one, 167 degrees Celsius. So we have 167 plus 273.15, this will be in Kelvin, over our pressure. Okay, so what's the pressure here in our inlet stream N2? So, may kita ninyo, our pressure here is negative 40 centimeter of water. Okay, so let me take note of that. Um, pressure 2, let me write here, pressure 2, is equal to negative 40 centimeter water. Okay, so we need to take note of that. So first, let me give you the um, conversion of centimeter water to atmosphere. So, so take note of this conversion. For every one atmosphere, we have 1033.33 centimeter of water okay so our given is negative 40 centimeter of water okay so this is a gauge pressure okay if it's not clear to you what is an absolute pressure what is gauge pressure and atmospheric pressure we have a separate video explaining all these types of pressure so i suggest to watch that video in order to understand uh, what i'm doing here in uh, handling this given which is a gauge pressure because in order to get the absolute pressure we need to add our atmospheric pressure to our gauge pressure so therefore we have one atmosphere which is our atmospheric pressure we need to add that 1033.33 we need to add that to our given gauge pressure which is negative 40 so therefore, this will be negative, no? This will be minus 40. Okay? So this will be an absolute pressure now. This is in centimeter water. Now, since our gas constant is in atmosphere, so I will have to convert this centimeter water into atmosphere. So we have for every 1033.33 centimeter of water, I will have one atmosphere okay so let me check our units if they are consistent our kilomole will be cancelled out our volume will remain 
our pressure atmosphere will be cancelled out, centimeter water will be cancelled out, temperature Kelvin would be cancelled out. So our unit will be cubic meter per minute. Okay, so let us do our calculation para makuha natin yung ating volumetric flow rate dito sa ating stream 2. Okay, so now let us use again our calculator to get our answer. So we have 9.36 times 0 0.082 times, okay, our temperature 167 plus 273.15 divided by this one, our um, absolute pressure, we have 1033.33 minus 40. And then we will be multiplying that to 1033. So we have times 1033.33. Now we have 351.43 cubic meters per minute. Alright? So, nakuha na natin yung volumetric flow rate ng ating um, stream 2, okay, which is the dry air. Okay, so, nasagutan na natin yung pangalawang requirement natin. Volumetric flow rate of the inlet air. Our answer here is 351.43. Okay, so 351.43. cubic meter of air per minute okay now we need to get the upward velocity of the air okay so we need to take note na given ang diameter ng ating tank here which is 6 meters okay so uh, in order to get the vol the velocity so pinahanap sa atin is yung velocity so let me write that here we need to get the upward velocity and given sa atin the diameter which is 6 meters okay so we know that the formula for the volumetric flow rate is equal to the area of our tank times the velocity okay of our gas okay so this is what we are looking for the upward velocity of our gas okay so that means in order to get the velocity we should divide our volumetric flow rate to the area so we know the volumetric flow rate we already know v2 which is 351.43 cubic meters per minute divided by our area so we already have the diameter here so therefore uh, we need to divide that to the area of our tank. So we have pi, the diameter over 2 squared, right? So let us have that here. We have 351.43 cubic meter per minute over pi divided by um, 6 over 2 because this is a diameter. Then squared. Alright, so let us use our calculator in order to have the velocity. Velocity at stream 2, okay? Velocity at stream 2 is equal to 351.43 divided by pi. Then divided by 6 squared times 2 squared so we have 12.43 since our unit here is meter squared so our unit will be this will be cancelled we will have only meters here so therefore our unit here will be um, 12.43 meters per minute this is our velocity of our stream to or if you want we can still convert this into um, meter per second so we have 
12.43 meters per minute times for every one minute we have 60 seconds okay so this will be cancelled out so therefore our velocity is equal to calculator we have 12.43 divided by 60 0 0.21 uh, meter per second okay so we already got our answer here 0 0.21 meter per second so let me write here because we already answered that so 0 0.21 meter per second so we already got the upward velocity so the question here in letter b what problem would you guess would occur if the velocity is too high so as you can see here with 0 0.21 meter per second velocity everything will be fine but if we increase that so what will happen is that the powdered milk would be blown out of the reactor by the air instead of falling to the conveyor belt okay so that's what is going to happen kapag nagsupply tayo ng masyadong mataas na velocity if it will exceed the velocity that we have here okay so, I hope this helps you in your study for material balance. Thank you very much and have a nice day. To watch more of our lecture videos about engineering and STEM subjects, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell para lagi kayong updated sa mga videos na ia-upload namin. We are regularly uploading tutorial videos in engineering, mathematics, chemistry, physics, at iba pang subject na magagamit ninyo sa inyong pagre-review. So, thank you very much sa patuloy ninyong pagsuporta sa engineers.org.